What's going on guys, it's your boy Rory here in the building and today what we have is a very special video, highly requested. I'm going to be taking you guys on a behind the scenes editing tutorial, whatever you wanna call it, where I'm gonna show you guys my workflow and show you my retouching process as well as a little bit of color grading today. Um, thank you so much for tuning into this channel. This channel is dedicated to helping you guys level up your photography. With that being said, let's jump right into it. So here we are in Camera Raw. As you can see here, everything is now leveled out. So this is the camera. This is the image straight out of camera. Um, and as you can see, there are a little bit of, um, the ambient is killed a little bit in this image, but realize guys that you have to take a good image out of camera in order to get um, a really good edit. That is the number one tip that I have for you today. Um, and so the reason why I shot this image and the reason why this is, this looks the way this is. And by the way, this is this image came out exactly how I wanted it to be, just to give you that kind of insight. Um, what I really wanted from this image was to have a balance out exposure. And by balance out exposure, I mean that I am able to preserve the highlights here while also having my subject not look very flashy. And by flashy, I mean that that is very obvious that I'm using off camera flash. So um, if I bring up the blacks and the shadows here, as you can see, you see that I'm successfully able to bring back the detail that I wanted. And now it looks like a beautifully balanced out exposure. This photo does not look obvious in my opinion that off camera flash was used. However, I have characteristics of off camera flash that I still want, such as the catch light in the eyes. So if I zoom in here, I was cognizant of this, wanted to make sure I have the catch light in the eyes, as you can see here. And the, the exposure looks beautifully balanced. As you can see, the only thing I really had to do is really just bring up my shadows and the blacks here. And for this image specifically, I really like the white balance and I like how everything looks in here. I do want my subject to pop out, so that's why the ambient is slightly killed. Um, there you can see it's a little bit dark in the background, but that is okay. And with that being said, I'm done pretty much. I don't really have to do much here because I feel like this was shot pretty well out of camera. So I'm going to now open the image and we are going to jump into Photoshop. First thing I'm gonna do is unlock that layer. And then I'm going to create a new layer here so we can work and start with the retouching process. So along the retouching process, a way that you can work non-destructively is you can use your healing brush tool, not to be mistaken with the spot healing brush tool, um, and you're going to use a current and below. And what current below does is it allows you to work on a blank layer while also working non-destructively and not touching that base layer. Some people I see, they duplicate their layer and they work on that, but that's a pretty bad way of working in Photoshop because just because you duplicate that layer, that means that you are still working on the actual layer that will be used itself and you can't actually go back and make any changes. If I needed to go and erase anything, I can just go here to the eraser tool and erase those changes as you can see, just like that. But also, I can go and delete this layer altogether if I needed. You can see the changes that we made. It gives you the option to see your before and after of what you made, the changes you made. And the list goes on for the reason reasons why you should be retouching this way. Now, I'm not saying that the way that I do is the correct way. I'm just showing you what I use and why I believe that it helps. There are a million ways to retouch here. Some people use the patch tool, which I don't find is that beneficial because the patch tool, again, is works non-destructively, you have to work on the base layer itself. It does not allow you to use current and below. So again, we are using the healing brush tool here and I am pretty much, the key here when you're editing with your retouching process is you wanna be using a very small brush size. And you will hear me say that a lot um, and you will hear me continue to say that a lot because it is something that, that really needs to be said when it comes to retouching. There are certain aspects of Retouching that um, I believe are the fundamentals and that you really need to learn. And using a small brush size is one of those. And I know it sounds something that's um, sounds like something that's kind of like a small deal, but to me it is a big deal because when I first started off retouching, I was using a too big of a brush size. And by using too big of a brush size, I was bringing areas and sampling from one area and, and bringing trails of of texture into another area and my retouching game, I couldn't figure out what I was doing wrong. And what you're seeing here is me just 
sampling from one area and bringing it to another area here. And I'm doing that by holding down the option key. And I'm now going to speed this up so you guys don't have to wait and watch me do all these small little retouches. Okay, here we are and welcome back. So we, let's look at the before and after of what I've done. I have removed all the blemishes that I think that need to be removed. So um, you can see I still have a little bit of trailing and things like that, but we will work on that here on our dodge and burn. Now what I'm doing guys is I am, I am running an action so I don't have to go and do all these things. If you're not familiar with what an action is, basically allows me to record a sequence of events in Photoshop um, of things that, um, of basically tasks that I need to complete that can just be run all by itself. So I am basically essentially by, by hitting that play button here on the dodge and burn, what I'm doing is I'm, I am, I am opening up two curves adjustment layers and I am bringing up the midtones on one. I'm bringing down the midtones on the other, and I am inverting the layer masks by doing that. I am running i'm running dodge and burn which basically allows me to paint areas of light into another area if you are not familiar with what dodge and burn is now this this action here can be found online on many different resources um, if you want i can i can personally give you my dodge and burn action for free all you have to do is follow me on instagram and shoot me a DM, tell me that you watched the video and I will personally send you my dodge and burn action. So I am going to be using a dodge and burn assist tool which comes along with this. And as you can see, it, it turns my picture into a black and white picture. And all I'm doing here is by using this dodge and burn assist tool is it allows me to see the darker patches and the inconsistencies of the midtones, the shadows and the highlights. So you can see I have some patches here, 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 and here. So let's go and let's start working on those. The settings that you guys need to know that I personally use are 100% opacity. I have this checked off, this checked off, and 100%, sorry, 2% flow. This is here. This is me using my Wacom tablet, which allows me to have pen pressure sensitivity, as well as the this tool here which is the airbrush tool which allows me to um to basically uh have if i if i hold down in one area it will add more emphasis to that area as would a a you know a uh an airbrush tool so i am going to just remove some of these patches just like how i'm doing here just like this I'm gonna come over to the forehead, to that little area that I saw here. And guys, this right here, what I'm doing again is dodge and burn, and specifically, it is called local dodge and burn. I will also be showing you guys methods for global dodge and burn. So, if you have any questions at all, I will make you a deal. Go and follow me on Instagram right now and shoot me a DM. I answer every and all questions. I may take a little bit of time to get back to you, but I will always make sure that I answer all your questions. So if you follow me, I will. you can shoot me a message and I will help you as much as I can if you have any questions about anything that we are going over today in this video. Thanks again for tuning in so much, guys. Um, I really appreciate it, and this really helps me out a lot. So um, let's look here and see what I've done. I actually see a little bit of a patch here. I'm going to go to my burn, and I'm just going to darken some of these little light patches that we have here just to kind of even out the skin. And let's zoom out, and let's see what we have done. So you can see here, I am just... And she has beautiful skin, so this is she really has made my job really easy here. Let's go and turn that assist tool off, and let's see what we have. So I'm going to turn that off and on, and you can see what I have done. I have evened out those areas of trails that we have from our cleanup. I'm going to lay, label this cleanup, 
which is what we just did earlier. I'm going to label this L, D, and B for local dodge and burn. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to run another action. Guys, what I'm doing right here takes an extremely long time unless you get really good at it. I've gotten to the point where I feel like I'm pretty, pretty decent at it. So this process here is going to be pretty quick. I'm going to label this one G, D, and B for global dodge and burn. I'm going to bring the assist tool to the top. And then I am going to turn on my dodge. And I'm going to bring my flow up to 5%. And I am just going to dodge in the areas that I see have highlights already. Here on the top of the nose. And her skin here is really, really, really good. And I love the way she did her makeup on this shoot here. This is actually a birthday shoot of hers, for her birthday photos. Had a blast shooting these with her. She was an awesome client. I'm going to bring out some of these highlights here where she's done her makeup. It looks really good. I'm going to then go on to, oops, didn't mean to put that. I'm gonna go on to burn. And I'm going to burn here in this area here and if you're wondering like where do I dodge where do I burn I'm I have already gotten to the point where I've edited so many photos that I already know where to go but essentially what I'm doing is I'm going around I am burning around the areas that I have dodged so if you see here I dodged in the center I'm going to burn all the way around the face here just like that and let's zoom out and see what we have done so far so as you can see there we have successfully added a lot of dimension to the face now we're going to do the same thing here for the skin and again i love the way the light kind of fell and created some beautiful highlights here and i'm just going to dodge and burn as you can see around that just to add some really, really beautiful skin dimension there, just like that. Now I'm going to take my burn and I'm going to burn the hair here, just like this. And I'm going to dodge certain areas and bring out those highlights. And I'm doing this really quick, but you really kind of just get the point here that I'm really just adding dimension. Now let's go and let's dodge something, dodge and burn some of the environment here. I'm gonna bring out some of this here, just like that. And I'm gonna burn this area in here. Let's burn some of that grass, grass there, just adding a little bit of dimension to the area. And we are good with our dodge and burn. Now the assist tool that I did, that I went over here, um, Again, this comes with the dodge and burn action. Follow me on Instagram, shoot me a message. I will personally send you this action. So now I'm going to go into the color. I'm going to affect that dress first. So I'm gonna bring up the color just like that to about negative 35 looks good. And the opposite of cyan is red. So if I go on the negative, it is adding red tones here. If I go to the right, it is adding cyan tones here. So, I'm going to bring that up again to 35, that looks good. And I'm going to hit it with some black, which is affecting the luminosity of the color. And that looks like a really beautiful red. But as you can see here, it is really just messing up the entire image here, which I don't wanna do. So I'm gonna press Command I so that I can hide everything under that layer. And I'm going to just paint in here the pop of red on that dress. And this is why I love, absolutely adore working in Photoshop because working in Photoshop, it allows me the flexibility to use layer masks, which I am not able to do in Lightroom. So just painting around this, here, really nice light, and just making sure that's not affecting this area. Oh, it is affecting that, okay. So, 
just a little bit of a color pop here on this dress and let's see the changes that I've made let's turn that off and on again that it's a really nice pop there I'm gonna darken that even more that looks good right there and let's bring that down perfect got that color pop that looks beautiful I'm then going to go to a 10% flow and since she has red lipstick I am going to just add a pop of color to that red lipstick just so that pops out really nice like you can see the before and after on that that looks great okay now what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to color read this guy here so I'm going to delete this because I didn't mean to do that and then I'm going to go into selective color again go to cyan's because this looks like it falls into cyan's and I want to turn this to like a tealish color guys because this is going to contrast really well and by adding greens I know I'm going to get a teal color just like that and this comes really easy because I have personally edited a ton of photos so I'm gonna add teals there that looks like it contrasts really well with that and this yellow I want to turn this kind of a yellowish color just because I feel like the green is a little bit distracting so I'm gonna go to my yellows because the grass although is green it looks like it's falling into the yellow tones and um, editing a ton of photos I know that that falls into the yellows so I'm going to bring that right there actually I like how that's affecting the entire image so let's turn that off and on and see what we have done I think that looks really well and I am going to let's bring that uh, let's go to 70 let's bring let's just experiment with this let's bring this up to let's give that 10 a little bit of pop just like that and then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of contrast by going to the blacks on selective color and I'm going to bring the blacks up one notch and as you can see here I am adding contrast by doing that and um, let's bring it up to two so I'm, I'm deepening those blacks and I'm now going to go and add a small baby s curve here I'm going to bring up the midtones and then I'm gonna bring down those shadows just like that, just to balance it out. Guys, that is the final image. That is it, we are done. It took me 18 minutes to finish out this edit, but I hope that was fast enough, quick enough to the point where we're not sitting here for four hours and also um, enough, you know, and detailed enough for you to learn. If I miss anything in this edit, please let me know. Please follow me on Instagram, at ATXRoy. I'm going to be dropping a ton of videos this year, I promise you guys, and I promise them, I promise you I'm going to love, help you level up to the point where, you know, you guys are going to be taking amazing images, and um, yeah, if you guys uh, need anything, let me know, shoot me a message on Instagram, I can't wait to see them, um, and until then, I will see you guys on the next one.